And I would like to introduce the next speaker. He is coming from Lithuania, uh, Vilnius Technical University. And he is talking about the residual stiffness analysis of flexural concrete elements with composite reinforcement systems, which is, of course, uh, also the topic of the PhD thesis and the, the research project related to the PhD thesis. And it's our pleasure to listen to an excerpt of the patient, so the floor is yours. And the presenter is Haji Akbar Sultani. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. And uh, first of all, uh, please uh, accept uh, my apology if uh, any uh, uh, by the connection happened because I am in a staying in a place which I have very poor uh, con internet connection. So uh, once again, thank you so much for everyone. Um, my name is Haji Akbar Sultani, and I'm a first year of a PhD student. And my uh, topic is a residual stiffness analysis of lecture element concrete with a composite reinforcement system. My uh, supervisor is Dr. Victor Gripnayak, and I have a uh, collaboration with uh, Professor Louis Torres and the University of uh, Girona. Uh, the research object is uh, residual stiffness of reinforced uh, concrete element is closely related with the structural integrity of the crack section. Tension stiffening model could represent the stiffness in average manner. Numerous studies have been carried out investigation the tension stiffening uh, issues, but only several work address the flexure effect. The proposed model uh, represent a close uh, form solution of the tension stiffening problem requiring neither iterative calculation or nor description of the loading history. Research idea, uh, the, it is a rational way of uh, composing a uh, composite reinforcement system, residual stiffness uh, flexure elements subjected to short-term load and the laboratory condition is the focus of this research. New study, our uh, new testing procedure was developed to estimate uh, residual stiffness flexure uh, of concrete element with a different type of bars, sheets, fibers used as a reinforcement. The equivalent uh, tensile stress is the parameter of the proposed to quantify the residual stiffness of the concrete. The corresponding analytical model represents a closed form of the solution. Um, a uniform uh, testing protocol is necessary to um, solve this problem and uh, the test specimen must be sample and suitable for a um, application of residual stiffness uh, concept. A corresponding model uh, should be also sample and adequately represent the stress strain behavior of the tensile concrete. To implement this idea, uh, the analytical model are, um, are developed to represent the test outcome and of the existing specimen. In this study, uh, the specimens are developed adequately represent, uh, represented by a simplified residual stiffness model. Geometry of the specimen, uh, the proposed um, uh, slab-shaped uh, beam um, specimen has a rectangle cross-section that can be reinforced with the internal bars, as you see in here, and near surface mountain stirrup and uh, external sheet in different combination. This 1,000 um, millimeter long specimen tested under four point bending uh, load scheme and 600 millimeter pure bending zone. Uh, linear variable displacement uh, LVDT measured the vertical displacement and the surface deformation also measured by the LVDT attached in the two continuous line side of the deformations. The, in our case, FRP material, uh, which is used uh, as a strong and lightweight composite, this study employs FRP material for the strengthening purpose. The FRP material is a non corrosive and exhibited high tensile strength, but uh, low resistance in the transfer slot, as we observed, as relatively a small longitudinal modulus of elasticity of the sum current product are the main disadvantage of this FRP material. Uh, several sample has been reinforced with uh, in our um, this testing procedure. Uh, the, with the GFRP of uh, 13 millimeter and 16 millimeter bars. Many sample had the uh, uh, NSM near surface mountain, as you see in here, and the CFRP wrapping in the shear zone for, um, to avoid the premature failure of the specimens. 
the, um, the cross section are shown in here. More than 27 specimens were tested and uh, the beam were cast in steel form and they were unmolded after two to three days after the casting. All the specimens reinforced with the internal bars uh, or GFRP internal bars or uh, external uh, CFRP sheet or near surface mountain stirrups. The test uh, were carried out in our structural laboratory using five mega uh, capacity um, hydraulic machine. A load cell also measured the apply load. A monitoring parameter include vertical displacement and surface deformation in the pure bending zone. Deformation and crack pattern were fixed in the opposite side of the digital image coloration system. The stiffness is based on the moment uh, curvature uh, response of the pure bending zone. And uh, the applied monitoring scheme uh, uh, test enable the curvature estimating in different way from vertical displacement and the from surface deformation identified by the LVDT and TIC system. The figure shows the moment curvature, uh, curvature diagram is constructing using the deformation and the, uh, captured by the DIC system. The stiffness um, analysis is based on the moment curvature response in the pure bending zone. Uh, the applied monitoring scheme enables the curvature estimating in different way from vertical displacement and surface deformation as well. In here, you find the moment curvature diagrams of the specified beams uh, using surface deformation captured uh, by the DIC uh, system. And difference, uh, and the difference between the diagrams are uh, could be uh, identically by, by the variation of the cross sections. The final, uh, the final crack, the formation of the uh, critical shear failure was the failure of the all the specimens. In here, you see uh, while we uh, share strengthening uh, uh, our specimen by the uh, external sheet and we observed the, the load bearing capacity of these beams has been increased by 30%. The corresponding analytical model based on this following assumption um, uh, by uh, similar crack approach and linear stress di distribution within the section depth and perfectly elastic behavior of the tensile, uh, elastic behavior of reinforcement and compressive concrete. A rectangle distribution stress in the tensile concrete. These are the assumptions that close analytical form, uh, analytical solution of the tension stiffening problem. And this solution um, requires ni neither a 3 3 fault collision or not description of the loading history in our work. These are the um, coefficients of their uh, analytical approach. Um, the moment curvature diagram is the object of the residual stiffness analysis. The difference between the diagram of the specimens could be related with the variation of the cross-section in dimension. Uh, this uh, moment curvature diagram has constructed using surface deformation captured by the IC system. The, these diagrams were derived uh, using the proposed concept of the average stress uh, of the tensile concrete. The difference between the diagram or nominally identical specimen and could be related with the variation of the cross-section specimen. An uh, analysis of residual stiffness model reveals a significant efficiency of the external CFRP sheets and uh, concerning internal re reinforcement scheme. And this could be, uh, this could uh, will be our further research in this topic. And this, this figure um, illustrated uh, the residual stiffness tendency of the observed by the specimen with the composite reinforcement and the external sheet demonstrated the most efficient in B6, uh, most efficient resistance of the concrete cracking among the considered reinforcement system. The corresponding increase, the crack number also identified by the DAC system. The efficiency decrease, uh, the efficiency decrease would increase the uh, ratio of reinforcement. And another essential result uh, observed by uh, beam, uh, by the beam, uh, by other beams as well. The, mm, the closed form solution enables analysis of residual stiffness effect 
in elements subjected to the psychic load and the ability to analyze the residual stiffness element subject to the psychic load as the essential feature of the proposed analytical model. In our conclusion, the application of this proposed model is um, illustrated experimentally, more than 27 flexure specimen with different arrangement of uh, reinforcement were tested, several composite reinforcement scheme internal, including internal steel glass fiber reinforcement polymer and carbon fiber reinforcement polymer near surface mountain stirrups in different combination were considered. However, the formation of the critical share crack caused all the specimens fail in composite reinforcement. That's the consequences of low resistance of the fiber reinforced polymer material to the shear load. As, increase the, as we have increased the area of FRP reinforcement and it has no significant effect on the shear resistance. Also by doubling the number of CFRP sheets, it's only increased the load bearing capacity of uh, by 20% only. And um, uh, our future perspective, uh, the residual stiffness of the concrete uh, element with the composite reinforcement system under unfavorable environmental condition would be the object of our future research. Although the turn sheet were uh, the most uh, uh, found extremely efficient and resistant to flexural stiffness in the cracked concrete, the unfavorable environmental condition can alter the efficiency of the reinforcement system and it could be compatible uh, with the near surface mountain element, but not with the, uh, with the steel reinforcement. So this could be, we gonna find out in the future of Thank you so much for your attention and thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much for this uh, presentation. For me, it was a fast ride, I must say, to your research. Uh, I uh, could not uh, for 100 percent follow what uh, you, you have done, but um, that's why we can ask your questions. And I see that uh, there is one first question from Jean-Michel. He asked a question that uh, I understand it is not exactly the topic of your work, but what about the long-term behavior? Can you explain about the uh, deflections maybe which can occur uh, under a long-term perspective and how the material and the composite material behaves on the long-term perspective? Uh, thank you so much for the question. Um, uh, as uh, as I explained in the in the during my presentation, that uh, we have uh, tested this specimen for the short term uh, under loading test, and for uh, under long term behavior of uh, this composite reinforcement, we are gonna observe in our future work because uh, uh, you know, still it's uh, uh, it's gonna be uh, investigated on various aspects as well and uh, unfavorable environmental condition or uh, under psychic load and then uh, uh, place it into the chamber which is uh, high humidity and less humidity. Okay, thank you. Does this answer the question, Jean-Michel? Yes, uh, um, maybe also the, the long-term behavior of uh, the connection, in fact, um, of course, I understand the, the effect of environmental uh, conditions, but also the the behavior of the glue, for instance, on the long term. Maybe it, it's uh, it's affected uh, in the long term. Um, yes, certainly that is uh, that's going to be. Um, investigated, but we have observed that uh, for the composite uh, reinforcement system in which uh, attacked with the CFRP sheet, uh, there was a, um, there was a while the failure, there was a debonding uh, by the epoxy as well uh, when the load was applied. And uh, for this bonding effect, uh, it's going to be observed in the unfavorable environmental condition. But until now, it was um, it, it failed due to the um, share crack and uh, uh, by the uh, by the poor resistance uh, of the FRP material with the uh, transfer slope. Okay. Um, we have another question. Uh, 
in the chat. I would like to read it for you. And of course, we're looking forward to receive your answer. Uh, although the authors wish to study the flexural behavior, the span, particularly the shear span, is low, uh, making the beams shear critical. What are the author's view about this? So what is your opinion about this? How would you answer this question? Um, yes, uh, he, he has pointed uh, that this, uh, our beam has failed uh, due to the shear cracks. And uh, we have the, uh, we uh, we we have increased the shear span as well once in our uh, during the laboratory test, but it has not affected uh, properly to our result. Still, we uh, we we face the um, failure uh, due to the uh, shear crack as well, because uh, uh, the, the increasing the. Um, share span does not affect uh, the result, but still it's going to be fail in the in share zone and critical crack of share. Okay, but I have also a question about this issue uh, because uh, on slide number five, you, you, you mentioned on also you, you, you wrote that this is a new type of test setup. So a new testing layout is designed. So what is the novelty? of this testing setup. Uh, I'm sorry, what do you mean? Uh, what's the meaning of novelty? Uh, as you wrote, a new testing set, uh, testing layout is designed. So yeah. what, 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 what is new about this setup? What is the difference to former setups leading to a more, let's say, in, in terms of, of, of your questions, uh, in, in, in terms of a new interpretation of the results? Um, we, uh, we, first of all, we consider to be this, uh, our analytical model as, um, as simple as possible to obtain the rectangle um, stress diagram. And uh, for uh, this, uh, uh, but for um, to finding the uh, tensile, uh, tensile strains in the, in the pure bending zone, uh, and this, this layout was, uh, pretty suitable and uh, for, for our uh, laboratory and to find out the, uh, the number of crack which can be identified uh, in the pure bending zone. Okay. Uh, we have uh, two questions from Ahmed uh, Lukili and, uh, and the first one, uh, both of them are related to the uh, digital image correlation to the DIC. Uh, the first one is how uh, you correlate the DIC measurements with the other properties. Um, we, uh, I'm, I'm sorry that the question is how, how did I relate the DIC uh, properties with, with which one? To, uh, I only read uh, other properties. Uh, however, Ahmed is not able to uh, uh, ask it wish, uh, this question by himself because he obviously has some problems with the microphone. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, uh, the, the question is how the correlation is between the DIC measurement with other properties. That means not only the cracking and not only the the deformation. Uh, how about other properties, stresses, and so on? For example, uh, the uh, by the digital image correlations, uh, it it can be comparable with the uh, properties, and um, it gives us um, a close a close solution of uh, to the to the result, and uh, this is how the one of the one one could be um, it plays an important role by the DIC system. Of, co of course, obviously, it is identified uh, the, the crack uh, by, the, by the cameras, but also we can, by the observing of the values and the data, and we have a very close uh, solution uh, while compared to the results obtained by the LVDT and the DIC system. Okay, but related to this transparency, to this slide number 12, so mm -hmm. on the on the, on the uh, right hand side you have the images of the DIC. Yes. On the left hand side you have the moment curvature diagram. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And this brings me to another question of Ahmed uh, because he asked, are the DIC data measurements are used in the curvature calculation? Yes. Of, of of calculating the curvature. Yes, of course. We have the um, we have compared uh, the the data from the DIC system. We have compared the data from the um, LVDT, and uh, by uh, comparison, the most um, identical values have been chosen and obtained in here in the uh, moment curvature diagram. Okay, thank you. Any other question, physically and or in the chat? There is a question in the Q and A. Here it is. Yes, uh, there is another question uh, from Lakani Hitesh, and he is asking about: Can the authors please comment on how the initial stiffness in cases of steel, uh, GFRP, and CFRP compare? So, what is the mm -hmm. comparison between these three types of uh, materials? Mm, but we have not uh, at the initial stage or uh, we have not compared the uh, uh, stiffness of uh, but uh, mm, uh, theoretically we have compared but it was uh, way behind uh, different with the experimental result and the initial stage we have not compared the, mm, the stiffness of gfrp and cfrp and uh, mm, steel reinforcement okay i hope uh, this answers your question Any other questions from the audience? Nicola. Yes, uh, yes, I can ask uh, one or two questions. I would first um, also support the question by Professor Torrenti that it would be very interesting if possible to test uh, over the long term, the, the degradation of tension stiffening and of the stiffness, of course, because it will be very important for for deflection so if at all possible to perform any long-term tests it would be very valuable and my mm -hmm. question would be would you uh, be considering also tests because for example here you have combinations of um, steel bars and cfrp sheets mm -hmm. uh, were you thinking about maybe first uh, pre-cracking an element that only has steel bars and then applying cfrp uh, and then uh, performing the tests to see how it uh, performs in that case, because it would be uh, something that uh, would be probably important for, for practice for, uh, yeah, for mm -hmm. pre-cracked elements. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, but, but um, uh, sorry for this whole uh, uh, voice, I cannot understand. Uh, we, we have tested our, um, each specimen has been tested at the, at the first stage, uh, whether it was internally uh, reinforcement steel or whether it's uh, external uh, CFRP sheet attached. And we find, we find out those cracks after the testing procedure. Uh, then, well, but we did not go beyond the um, yielding uh, of the reinforcement or either the uh, capture of the uh, the external as reinforcement because due, due to many reasons because we are um, avoiding to damage the laboratory equipment and uh, uh, as i understand that uh, we uh, we have tested uh, in the, at the big at the beginning not after the we tested uh, for example the reinforcement by, uh, beams elements with the reinforcement and then we have a tighter cfrp sheets and then again tested but we have not uh, did something like this. Okay, thank you. But may I ask you also a question in, in, this, in the same uh, direction uh, about the, the, the study. Is this study more related to using composite reinforcement systems for newly built constructions? or is it related to the rehabilitation or retrofitting uh, of uh, structures, which maybe, as Nicola said, maybe have been pre-cracked? Mm -hmm. uh, this uh, reinforcement, uh, this uh, specimen is uh, not representative of the real life, 
uh, but this is, is um, uh, specimen or suitable to estimate the uh, degradation mechanical properties of the different combination of the composite. Okay. Did you uh, take into account any comparison with uh, existing design codes or pre-normative documents. Uh, as you know that we have in the FIB model code 2010 also some design or preliminary design rules for uh, composite materials. Mm -hmm. did, you, did you study uh, these standards or this, these documents to, let's say, validate your, your, your model? Uh... I'm sorry to answer about this one, but no, unfortunately, we have not uh, come to this such stage. Okay. Uh, also, in this slide, uh, one one question, uh, because I was looking at the figure of all the combinations that you had. So, mm -hmm. what was like the the guiding principle? I mean, were you targeting for certain different members to have a similar flexural capacity? Or like, what was the rationale behind the choosing that you have, I don't know, three number six bars and then plus CFRP and so on. So like Professor Dan said, was it coming from some calculations beforehand of some ultimate capacities or uh, yeah, what was behind the choice of param parameters? Uh, our aim was to identify uh, the most efficient uh, composite uh, reinforcement scheme and to able to and uh, to compare with the uh, with the as a re, uh, internal reinforcement uh, steel and and be based on tension stiffening diagram, and uh, uh, then uh, we have observed that while testing all those specimens, we have observed that uh, uh, the most uh, most uh, significant and most efficient uh, in tension stiffening diagram are the external reinforcement CFRP sheets uh, which beam attached. But uh, when, uh, when it compared to the, uh, the failure, um, we have, uh, we have uh, witnessed that the beam with the internal uh, steel has failed due to the yielding. But in this one, we have uh, experienced the uh, failure of the specimen with the shear cracks. So, uh, our aim was and our target was to uh, find out the most efficient uh, composite reinforcement system, whether it's uh, external uh, CFRP sheets and whether it's a uh, NSM near surface mountain or it's a uh, GFRP internal bars and profile. That was the aim of our, our work. Okay. okay, thank you. Very much. Thank you so much. Last last questions, if there is one. If there is no urgent question, so thank you very much again for your presentation, Hachi. Thank you so much.